All right. <clears throat> Shalom. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Kakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who does lead and rule well. Salutations to all you hopeful like Aki and pushing out this word in sincerity and in truth that the four corners of the earth. And sincere shalom to you, Akim and Akwa, for listening and learning, preparing yourselves here in these last days. And to the entire household of faith who is fighting this good fight of faith, I want to say shalom. This is Brother Dequar from the DC camp. Come back at you with another lesson. And I'm going to title this one, Yahweh Shai's obedience is the ultimate display of faith. All right, now, when you read James, the second chapter, we know that um, you no know, faith is is it's an action word, man. You know, and that action that is produced or that is shown is obedience, man, which is what the Lord requires, man. Remember, He requires um, obedience more so than sacrifice. He would just rather uh, we do what He says, man. But faith. Without works is dead. So those that when you're doing the works that comes with being obedient to his will. And um, when you read the story of how shy and, um, you know, his him being crucified, which is why I got this picture right here. You know, it, it's no it shows that that, you know, he, he he led the way. Matter of fact, um, that just made me think of this scripture. You know, he's the uh, author and. um captain of our salvation. This is John 13 verse 15. It says, for I've given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. <coughs> now, you know, this example that he was speaking of in this scripture was, uh, he was setting the example of foot washing, you know, but he also showed us the example of, of how to celebrate the, 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 the Passover, you know, how to keep the Sabbath, you know, and just obeying the will of the Lord, the, the, the heavenly father, man, you know, his, his life. He personally showed us the, the, the path of faith that we should walk in, man, even up until his death. You know how he lived and how he died, you know, it's to it was to the Lord. All right. And that is how we ought to be. And that's pretty much, um, you know, the lesson that I want to get into <coughs> uh, today. All right. So I'm going to start first with, um, you know, his example of obedience. You know, the night before Yahweh was crucified, he went to the Mount of, Ol Mount of Olives and prayed, you know, right after, you know, celebrating the Passover. And, um, you know, this is where you can see Yahweh Shah obedience, you know, that's that that should be engraved in us, man. Something that we should always be re uh, thinking about. All right. This is Luke 22, verse 39. It says, and he came out and went as he wont to the Mount of Olives and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were drops, were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. So Yahweh knew that he would suffer on the cross, man. And it caused him tremendous, tremendous anguish. Alright? But you know, like like I said, man, it highlighted that his, his sweat was like drops of blood, <clears throat> you know. But even through all that, he stayed obedient. He said, not my will, but yours. Let yours be done. You know, he obediently accepted that pain, that humiliation. You know. And even, and, and even the death. <coughs> all right. Now, um. That made me think of, uh, what's that scripture? Right. When they came to grab him up, right? I'm going to get two scriptures on that. Uh, this is Matthew 26. And um, let me see. 50. Yeah, this is Matthew 26, verse 47. 
It says, and while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Hold him fast. <coughs> Damn. And forthwith he came to Yahweh and said, Hell, master, and kissed him. And Yahweh said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh and took him. And he, behold, one of them which were with Yahweh stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest's, uh, of the high priest's and smote off his ear. Now we know that was Peter. He says, Then said Yahweh unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Esau, you should be thinking about that. It says, uh, verse 53, here's the point. It says, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? All right. So. He said, you don't think that I could call my, you know, I could pray to my father and he would give me legions of angels. You know, 12 legions of angels. You know. But he said, but what did he say? He said, but then how would the that's tens of thousands of angels, man. How then would the scriptures be fulfilled? You see. And what was the scriptures that, that needed to be filled? That he had to die for our sins. So that he could save us and reconcile us back to the Heavenly Father. All right. So he came in there with a mission. All right. This is um what's that scripture? Uh they tried to mock him. Let me find that real quick. Hmm. Bear with me one second. Okay. It's the next chapter. <coughs> um, I'm trying to see where I want to start at. All right. So, you know, that's the story. You know, you want to read the whole story of, of what they did. You know, the people asked for them to release Barabbas over your house shot, man. That's how insist they was at him. All right, they started mocking him, stripped him of his robe, you know, and put on a scarlet robe, I'm mocking him, man. All right, but let me start at, um, I'm going to start at uh, verse 36, because I don't want to make the lesson too long. This is Matthew 27, verse 36. It says, and sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, this is Yahweh, the king of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the son of God, come down from thy cross, from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and he and we will believe him. Now, surely if he would have came down from the cross, they would have believed him, but they wouldn't have believed him on the sense that he was fulfilling the scriptures, man, because there was someone that had to die for our sins. But they would have they would have been willing in the day of I power, of course, <laughs> you know, but that wasn't the will. Remember, how should the scripture have been fulfilled? You know. But it's ironic because if he would have saved himself, then he wouldn't have saved us. You see, we wouldn't have been reconciled to the heavenly father. We wouldn't have had um, that we wouldn't have been given the Holy Spirit, man. You know. We wouldn't have been given this grace. So Yahweh Shah had different things on his mind than um 
You know, that, that uh, uh, the attempt of, it would have been him being, being self right. That's why he didn't call the leaders of angels, man. You know? The only way he 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 could have saved others was per, by per, precisely what he did. Was not saving himself in that instance, man. You know? And, and, and these idiots, they was they they only thought carnally, man. They wasn't thinking spiritually. They wasn't thinking according to the, 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 the scriptures, man. You know? They said uh, they thought that the nails that was holding him there, or or the soldiers that prevented him uh, uh, from being rescued, man. They thought that 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 his powerlessness, powerlessness, and weakness guaranteed him death, man. But really, he laid. That's why the scripture say he laid down his life. Let me find that. You know. This is um I'm gonna read two of them. This is first John three verse sixteen. It says, Hereby perceive we love uh we the love of God or uh, Hamashiach, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You see? That's how important the brethren is, you know. But Yahushua laid down his life. He gave his life. He had a choice, you know, but he really didn't, you know, because at the end of the day, he was bound to his commitment to the Lord, man. You know? They they was thinking only of a physical impossibility, you know? But but us, you know, we know that those soldiers, those nails, they couldn't stop Yahushua, man. Even death couldn't stop him, man. You know, the truth of the matter is, <coughs> is that he ain't saved himself because, not because of their physical, nothing that they did, you know. Remember, he even told, he told uh, uh, Pontius Pilate that uh, he only got power, the power that his, you know, his father has given him, man, you know. But he came, he was, uh, 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 he had a moral imperative, if you will. He came to do his father's will, man. And he and he would not be uh, uh um what is it? Uh moved from that, man. <clears throat> That's why he said, not my wills, but your let yours be done. You know, so so disobedience to his father's will would have been unthinkable, man. You know, and he was uh resolute to 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 do his father's work. All right. Um, what is that scripture? It was another one I was just thinking. Yeah, this is John 5 verse 30. It says, I came, I can't of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the father which sent me, which have sent me. Okay. And then when Yahushua was put to death, this is what he said. This is John 19, verse 28. After this, Yahushua, knowing that all the things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, this is what he told Peter. Say, if I thirst. Now there was a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his side and put it to his mouth. When Yahushua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. All right. So when he said it is finished, he was talking about the, the not just, you know, he fulfilled the, the uh, prophecies in the Old Testament, man. You know, and, and up until his death, because that was pr prophecy. You know, so he had his obedience was, was the ultimate form of faith, really, because he had the power to stop it, too. You know. So. Yeah, man. And we ought to be uh, obedient as well, man. Okay? Obedience, uh, obedient faith is necessary to keep the Most High's commandments fully, man. And without that, it's impossible to keep it. Yahweh said only those that do the will of his Father is going to enter into the kingdom, man. 
All right, this is Matthew 7, verse 20, uh, 7, uh, no, Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So we got to do the same things, man. You know, we got to carry our cross just like he did. You know, and it even goes back into our forefather Abraham, man. The faith and obedience. This is Hebrews 11 and 8. And, you know, read that whole chapter. You know, it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. You see? So we got to walk by faith and not by by sight, man. You know? And Yahweh, he, he set the example of obedience. Okay? Get a couple more and I'm going to close. Um, this is John 14 verse 21. It says, he that hath my commandments and keep with them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. So remember, the scriptures say that, uh, 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 damn. Uh, it kind of escaped me, but roughly paraphrasing, them that do of his will shall understand doctrine, man. That's the Lord manifesting himself to you, supping with with, with you. And ones that's not really doing his will, they that's why they can't get it, man. You know? They don't understand the, the in-season and out-of-season stuff, man. You know? Because they ain't fully doing the will. They doing, they still doing their own kind of will, man. That's why y'all said, why calls me Lord? Lord, and do us not the things that I say. He said, you call me master and, and you and you say it rightly because I am. You know? But you doing your own will. You know, we got to follow the blueprint that Yahweh Shah set. Okay? Um, I'm going to get a couple more and I'm going to close, like I said. This is... um. <clears throat> Hebrews 5 and 8 It says Though he were a son Yet learned he obedience By the things which he suffered Okay Just like you see on the screen And being made perfect He became the author of eternal salvation Unto all them that obey him You see that He became the author of eternal salvation Unto all them that obey him so that's the all the world that the scriptures is talking about, man. You know, it ain't talking about every everybody in mankind. <clears throat> and you know, the only ones that's going to obey him is the elect uh, nation of Israel. Okay. All right. This is uh, I'm gonna close on this one. This is Romans five verse eighteen. It says, "Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came." Upon all men to condemnation. So disobedience was the thing that separated us from the Lord. You know, going back into the garden. And so that's what's referring to Adam. It says, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So this is talking about Yahweh Shah. For as by one man's or for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. All right. And we follow in that example by being obedient to what he did. So, you know, Lord willing, that was an edifying lesson. Until the next one, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham Kakadash. I want to say Shalom.